Thank you guys for coming for the presentation. Um, for us, uh, we are from a small uh, uh, program uh, in Chicago, uh, Metropolitan Group Hospital. Uh, we're part of the UIC umbrella program. So we have a couple interesting uh, 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 cases uh, for intragastric balloons since they've just come out. There are a couple problems that haven't been uh, reported on significantly. Uh, we'll just go over those. So the first case, we have a patient that was 50 years old, uh, female, has a history of obesity with a BMI of 33.8 that uh, actually uh, presented for elective uh, intragastric balloon placement. She was very compliant. Uh, the, uh, the procedure went well. Uh, for the first three months, she had approximately 30-pound weight loss. Uh, however, she started reporting some nausea uh, and food intolerance. Um, <clears throat> So when she went to see her gastroenterologist first, uh, he, uh, she was started on an appetite suppressant uh, prior to the intragastric balloon placement. So they chose to stop that medication. However, her symptoms didn't resolve. <clears throat> so at that point, she presented back to us uh, to see if there was any, anything else that could be done. Uh, we decided to get a, a basic set of labs and an abdominal x-ray. Uh, we'll see the x-ray right now. Uh, so as you can see, this is a very dilated balloon. Um, and in the next x-ray, we can see that there is an air fluid level. This is not really normal for an intragastric balloon. Um, so again, we started with the endos endoscopy. Uh, as you can see, we are going into the stomach now, and now you can see the balloon, which is significantly dilated. And uh, you can see a clear air fluid level there. There's also a significant amount of retained food we should not be there given that she's not eating for a little while now. Um, so at this point, uh, the decision was obviously to take out the balloon. So we proceed with a puncture. However, we uh, pulled the puncture needle out, uh, and a second attempt is made right away. This is important because once the balloon becomes a little deflated, it's harder to puncture it again. So you have to try that second attempt right away. As we can see, the fluid, which was collected uh, for uh, further culture, there's not much uh, that seems to be growing in there, or it doesn't look out of the ordinary. Um, so at this point, we're simply deflating the balloon. We're waiting for those sharp edges that you need before you can pull out the balloon. And here, we're close to getting those sharp edges, so we're almost there. And we're just getting the last bit of uh, residual fluid out. and now the balloon is ready to be taken out. <clears throat> we checked again the stomach to see if there was any other reason uh, for why the balloon would be dilated. Also, we were checking for ulcers, anything else, uh, gastritis, um, as the balloon uh, may cause some of that. Um, we see nothing, uh, so at this point, we choose to retrieve the balloon. This is the grasper that uh, usually comes with the kit, uh, and uh, we're trying to get that now. The balloon was taken out pretty uh, 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 without any complications. Uh, the patient did pretty well after that. All the symptoms were resolved, uh, and uh, that was pretty much it. The next case I have for you is basically a detached balloon in the pharynx. Uh, again, a straightforward case uh, on a presentation. 45-year-old female had a 32.5 BMI, had an intragastric balloon placed, for, and uh, she tolerated that procedure for six months had a significant weight loss, and then she was scheduled to have the intragastric balloon uh, removed uh, uh, as outpatient. Again, we start uh, with the endoscopy, uh, getting into the stomach. This is what it normally looks like. You have a very small uh, air fluid level, but usually even that is not there. Um, again, we de uh, deflate the balloon. And uh, one thing uh, just to point out, the, the reason the balloon is blue is because we put a little bit of methylene blue in there. Uh, in case the balloon ruptures, you would actually see the uh, uh, methylene blue in your urine. We always document uh, how much fluid was taken out. About 600 cc's is what we put in into the balloon. So uh, that way, we kind of ensure that we have taken most of the fluid out. Again, you can see that uh, here the balloon is deflated. Here we use a rat tooth grasper just because sometimes we were having trouble with the uh, grasper that was given with the uh, kit. Um, and as we are taking this balloon out, and we're 
just about to pull it through the esophagus. Uh, what we ended up having was uh, a small tear and uh, the grasp were basically slipped off the balloon. The only issue is that that happened right in the pharynx, you know, and uh, if you retrieve your intragastric balloon without intubating the patient, which is not the case for us, we usually always intubate patients, uh, that could be a big deal uh, as far as maintaining your airway. So at that point, we got a laryngoscope. Uh, we look inside when we were trying to grab the balloon. Unfortunately, not the best lighting, not the easiest way to go. So uh, we moved on to a glidoscope inst instead. And after trying several graspers, as it turns out, a right angle always does the job. So we were able to get that balloon out. So the patient did well, no issues. She was uh, able to go home the same day. Uh, but the, the goal of this video was to show, you know, uh, the possibility of a, a small case uh, that could go horribly wrong if not prepared for correctly. Uh, so we usually recommend intubating uh, the patients for uh, intragastric balloon removal. Any questions?